good morning, uh, everyone. Good morning, Marion and, and, and Ray. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation, Adam and, uh, and Ari. Um, so this, uh, um, this topic on the uh, durability of response with uh, direct acting antivirals is really becoming an important question with all, all the emerging uh, drugs that are now in, in, in clinical trials. Um, so we, in, in, that, in that context and in the context of uh, um, all these studies that are aiming at studying the, uh, the aim goal of this, uh, uh, the main goal of this uh, strategy, the uh, functional cure, um, we really need to, to start asking the question, will this um, responses be durable uh, over time. And this will depend on, on many, many factors, uh, as you all know, the persistence of CCCDNA in the liver, persistence of integrated viral sequences, the um, um, uh, failure of the uh, liver uh, immune responses to, to control the, um, the, the infection and so on. And more clinically, um, there, there's also a, a major question is, when are we going to, to assess the durability uh, depending on the uh, treatment strategy? And we've seen uh, different strategy and, and trial design in the, in the past uh, uh, few years where um, uh, therapy was stopped before HBS antigen loss and some other uh, uh, studies and study design where uh, therapy was stopped after at, uh, achieving HBS loss. And I think these are completely different situation that may uh, lead to different scenarios um, uh, regarding durability of response. So we, we know quite, uh, uh, we have le learned a lot from uh, 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 our experience with the uh, stop nuke strategies. Um, and um, here I'm just showing you a, a, a very uh, a short summary of the uh, take home message of these studies. Uh, on the uh, left hand side, you have the, um, I don't know if the uh, pointer works or, or not. Oh, yeah, okay, it works. Uh, on the left hand side, you, you have the um, uh, scenarios that occur after stopping nuke therapy when HBS antigen is still detectable at the end of treatment. Uh, and this was very uh, nicely summarized. In, the, in this gastro uh, paper uh, by this group of uh, Harry, um, where you can distinguish two, two main scenarios. One is that after uh, um, withdrawal, you, you have a, a rebound of our replication and then uh, an immune control of, of, of the infection and disease that may lead to inactive disease or even more, an HBS decline and HBS loss. While on the other hand, you may see uh, uh, a rebound uh, followed by uh, a flare uh, uh, of the um, uh, disease with severe flare, flares and uh, uh, sometimes decompensation that may require retreatment as early as possible. So this is quite well known now, but the, the issue is that we don't have predictors of, of these scenarios. So that's the, the, the point. And we have also learned from the past experience that when we, we stop nuke therapies after uh, um, achieving HBS loss during therapy and when it is confirmed, the um, durability of uh, HBS loss is, is observed in approximately 82% of, of patients. So the, the safe way of stopping treatment would be to stop after HBS loss based on the nuke strategy. Now we have to see um, what, will, uh, what will happen with the new direct acting antivirals. So now we have new mode of actions targeting different uh, uh, steps of the viral life cycles and today we'll be mainly talking about the uh, strategies targeting, uh, uh, targeting RNAs and, and capsid, uh, as the viral capsid because of time constraint. Uh, but I want to stress again the, uh, uh, the issue of the study of heterogeneities with, with the, all these different uh, mode of actions, um, different study designs, different stopping criteria, uh, different monitoring strategies, uh, and, and also different time of assessment of the, of the response. So we, are, we have to be very careful because we are in, still in the learning phase, and which is also very exciting because we are learning, but we, it's difficult to, to have a very strong message on what to do and, uh, uh, today. 
Now, so let's start with the uh, capsid assembly modulator. Um, uh, so I don't, don't have time to go through all, all of them. I would just give an example uh, with uh, the uh, studies uh, done with, uh, with Vebikovir. Uh, and it was presented by, by Mark Sikorsky uh, 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 very recently, a couple of years ago, um, at ESL, where um, the, the, the studies they were two, the 201, 2, two and 211, um, which were more like extension of, of previous studies. Um, in that study, um, there were some stopping criteria that were predefined, where patients are, uh, achieving a, a composite DNA and pregenomic RNA in serum that was uh, under 20 uh, IU per ml and HBE negative or, or very low uh, uh, could could uh, be proposed to stop therapy after a prolonged uh, uh, exposure to uh, the Bicovir and nucleoside analog. And what happened is that even after a very strong vowel suppression uh, observed dur during, during the, the trial, uh, all of the patients had a relapse in, in HBV uh, DNA in, in serum. So there was no uh, SVR, indicating that the, uh, the pool of CCC DNA was not affected sufficiently to, to prevent the rebound of, of our replication. And you see here on, on the slide on the, uh, the uh, different patterns of, uh, uh, of HBV DNA uh, relapse, and we, we've seen that in the uh, E antigen negative uh, patients, the, um, uh, the, uh, the peak of HBV DNA wa was, was lower and, and the, uh, uh, the time of relapse was a little bit uh, longer to, to achieve compared to the E positive patients, which was kind of uh, expected. But the, the take home message was that uh, if there was no HBS loss so, uh, during therapy, there was no way to get uh, SVR, uh, at least with this compound. Um, and you see here wh what happened uh, in terms of uh, restarting nucleoside analog after the uh, Vebicovir and nuke discontinuation. So um, you see that uh, the majority of, uh, of patients re restarted um, the, um, uh, the nuke, nuke therapy, 65% of the E negative and 78% of the E positive patients. And, and you, you see uh, uh, here the, the reasons uh, uh, why uh, uh, patients made the, uh, the protocol to, to, to restart. Um, so you have patients with higher HLT flare, more than 10 times the upper limit of normal, uh, HBV DNA higher than uh, 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 five logs plus HLT higher than three times the upper limit of normal and so on. Um, and in, uh, uh, in the end, you have very few patients that remained um, uh, off treatment at the end of the study. So here it was for uh, capsid assembly modulators um, without stopping, stopping without achieving HBS loss. Now we, we went through the uh, uh, more ambitious uh, uh, study, study design where so with the RIF2 study with the uh, uh, combination of nuke plus sRNA plus capsid assembly modulator, the versacapavir, so, uh, uh, in E negative uh, virologically suppressed chronic B patients. So at the end of the 48 weeks uh, um, uh, administration of triple combination patients were, were stopped and followed um, with a primary endpoint, which was HBS zero cl clearance. And there was obviously a control group where patients uh, received uh, nuke uh, therapy only. And they were predefined nuke uh, restart criteria that I, won't, I don't want to go through uh, all of them, but just to say that they were predefined. Um, and you see here uh, the, uh, the results in terms of HBS antigen uh, endpoint. So the proportion of patients with HBS below 100 um, was 71% uh, at the end of treatment and 46%, 47% uh, at the end of follow-up uh, one year later. Um, no patients achieve HBS zero clearance without restarting nuke during the follow-up period. And you see here the mean changes um, of um, HBS antigen after uh, stopping uh, therapy. So very, uh, very with a slow uh, rebound uh, of, H of HBS antigen. 
But now what we, if we go in more detail, uh, uh, deeper in the, in the situation, you see on the right hand side uh, what happens in terms of uh, uh, vowel suppression. And here uh, uh, in the trials, they use a composite uh, criteria um, of HBV DNA and HBS antigen uh, suppression with different level below 2000 uh, for HBV DNA and below 100. Uh, and the uh, um, uh, HBV DNA below LLOQ and HBS below uh, 100. And you see that you had a, a greater proportion of patients who receive the triple combination who achieve this composite uh, uh, suppression uh, compared to the uh, uh, new cologne uh, uh, um, patients. So th this uh, well was a, a confirmation that this triple combination therapy was able to achieve a profound uh, suppression of our replication. However, patients had relapse um, of the, the, the infection, and you see on the left hand side what happened in terms of HBV DNA uh, relapse. Um, and you see here that by different categories of uh, um, HBV DNA peak level uh, that the uh, 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 D DNA peak level were higher in the nucleon uh, arm versus the triple arm. And uh, in terms of ALT elevation, uh, the same was observed. Uh, LT flares were much more common in the nucleon arm versus the triple combination arm. And the mechanism for this is really not known today. Um, but again, showing that there was a, 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 a very good uh, outcome with a triple combination when you stop, stop treatment. Now, if we go to, uh, to, to uh, other combinations, which were the uh, SI, RNA, and uh, monoclonal uh, antibody against HBS antigens from, from VIR in the uh, nuke suppressed uh, patients, you know perfectly the, the trial design. So it's a March, two, uh, the March phase two trial. I won't go through this in detail. Uh, and you see here the uh, um, evolution of, um, uh, of HBS antigen uh, during therapy, uh, during the different, uh, during, uh, during therapy with the different treatment arms. And then the, uh, uh, you see that 90% of patients achieved uh, HBS below 10 at the end of treatment. And then there was a, a gradual re rebound of HBS antigen after stopping um, the uh, uh, sRNA and monoclonal antibody, and no patients achieve HPS zero clearance. Now, what was uh, interesting in this uh, virally uh, suppressed patients with nuke is that um, uh, some patients met the criteria to, to stop uh, the nuke. Uh, and uh, this was done in six of these, of these patients, uh, and they are the individual uh, cases are shown here. Uh, and what you can see is that uh, in um, uh, two patients, um, because of HBV DNA and ALT uh, elevation, HBV DNA is in blue and uh, uh, ALT are in red, uh, you see in these two patients uh, a rebound of our application, ALT flare, that uh, led to the restart of, uh, um, of the nucleoside analog while in the four others, uh, they were, uh, patients were uh, maintained off nuke uh, for the period of follow-up. So this is uh, also something uh, interesting to keep in mind, but also keep in mind that none of those patients had lost HBS antigen at the time of, of stopping. And now here we come to very interesting um, uh, part, which is um, a combination of the siRNA from VA with uh, or without pegylated interferon. Again, this is a study that was presented by, by MF at EASL, so you know uh, exactly the, um, uh, the trial design. What was uh, interesting is that uh, participants could discontinue PEG uh, and or v the siRNA if they reach uh, HPS below LLOQ and an anti-HPS uh, positive positivity after at two consecutive visits. And what was really interesting in, the, um, uh, in, in that study um, is that um, among the 31 patients that received a 48-week um, regimen of VIA plus PEG, um, <coughs> eight had a, a HPS clearance uh, 
4 and 4 in the two arms, 8 had HPS clearance at the end of treatment, and 5 maintained uh, um, the um, uh, HPS loss after 24 weeks follow-up. Uh, and what was even more interesting is that they look at predictors um, uh, of durability of HPS zero clearance, and they found out that uh, uh, the participants who had um, anti-S uh, antibody higher than 500 um, uh, had a sustained HPS response, while those who were below 100 um, uh, units uh, re uh, rebounded for HPS, and there were some intermediate cases. So that's uh, also something that, uh, that is really interesting in my, in my mind, that we will come little by little to, to learn from, uh, from these uh, studies. And to finish the, um, the functional cure rate with the uh, Bepirovirsin uh, studies, so the Beclear, famous Beclear study, so I don't want to go through the trial design, but here uh, JSK so asks a question, uh, can we uh, um, uh, predict functional cure, can we assess functional cure uh, on the long run uh, with the um, uh, Bepirovirsen uh, uh, trial design, and they, 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 are, um, they have enrolled patients who achieved a, a response during BeClear in the BeSure uh, uh, study, where they, they look at uh, um, off-treatment uh, response, and they take into account the half-life of Bepirovirsen in, in plasma, which is around two, 20 days. So they allow for a 12 weeks um, a washout, followed by 24 weeks uh, of whole treatment uh, to assess the functional cure uh, durability. So here is the uh, uh, study design of the uh, uh, of the B sure uh, uh, study. So allowing this 12 weeks wa washout and, and plus the 24 weeks uh, um, uh, assessment. And so they are still in the process of. Uh, um, um, collecting data, just want to show you briefly that uh, in the pa patients who were not on ANA and, and complete responders, we have um, um, patients who, uh, three patients who maintained their, their response out of three at, at months nine, uh, and obviously more data will come later. And for the patients who were not on uh, ANA and were complete responders, um, so you have uh, four out of four patients who maintained their, their response at, at months nine uh, as well. So still in progress, so we will learn uh, um, at each meeting, I guess, uh, from the durability of, uh, of the response. So in conclusion, viral rebound is a mainstay of stopping therapy when HBS loss is not achieved at the end of treatment. Safety is a major issue, and we've seen that in the RIF2 study where one patient uh, uh, had to, to, to be listed on, on the liver tr transplant uh, uh, program. Uh, we, we are still missing strong end of treatment predictors of sustained response um, that would allow a partial cure definition, for instance. And for patients who achieve HBS antigen loss at end of treatment, we are still in the learning curve, especially with the SRNA and PEG interferon combination and with the ASO uh, 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 trials. And we are sti still a lot of gap uh, in knowledge with, uh, as I said, predictors of response. Uh, um, uh, will it be the same across uh, m the different mode of action and trial design? And we should also be very careful in redefining the stopping criteria and the uh, new introduction criteria. And with this, I would like to thank the uh, different companies who provided some uh, data uh, for this talk. Thank you.